All right, welcome back. If you guys liked to uh, like CCSR, I think you guys will really, really like this game as well. Classic Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, or Philosopher's Stone. Um, we're gonna get started here. Uh, I'll just get us into the new game and I'll talk a little bit about the game as we go along. But this is an excellent run. You guys are really, really in for it now. So here we go. Time is going to start in three, two, one, and go. So if you're familiar with the Harry Potter lore, we skip all of that stuff with his aunt, uncle, and cousin, getting his Hogwarts letters, blah, blah, blah. We jump right into Diagon Alley. All right, first thing we're gonna do is grab our wand from uh, Mr. Ollivander here, who does in fact look like a garden gnome. But, you know, what can you do? Um, so the first thing you're gonna notice, if you're familiar with Harry Potter video games, is that this is not what you're used to, okay? This is, uh, you, you might be used to like the 3D action platformer kind of deals. This is a 2D 16-bit uh, version for the Game Boy Color that is a turn-based RPG. Um, and though it might be part of the quote-unquote awful block, or uh, you know, awfully good block, uh, this game, I, in my opinion, is actually very, very good. Um, so, first thing, we need to grab this specific deck of cards, the green deck here. That is very important for us to set up in the run. Um, and we're going to see just how broken this run can be. But first, we're going to grab a, an extra potion for safety here. Um, if, you ever, if you ever end up watching this game outside of a marathon, uh, when people are going for PB attempts, uh, you're going to notice that it's very reset heavy in the first couple minutes of the uh, the run. And that is because we set up a very, very, very important glitch needed for the entirety of the run. In the very first couple of minutes, we need very specific things to happen. Uh, we need to get to the boss fight, survive the boss fight in, in the Gringotts basement here. And then, very crucial that we do not hit an encounter anywhere after that. So, uh, there's going to be a good amount of safety saves. Um, to try and help with that, but uh, we're just gonna have to hope a little bit of RNG is on our side Or else we're gonna have to do some resets here just to get us on track But now we are in Gringotts getting ready to collect our money and We're gonna try to avoid encounters here as best as we can So you'll see me hesitate here take little small steps as I wait for the encounters to kind of pop so you might think that the benefit of this game is that you can see where the encounters are spawning, so it's probably easy to dodge them, right? Uh, unfortunately, this game loves to snipe, so they'll put an encounter right in front of you, just like that, and there's not going to be too much you can do about it. You will see me try to pause a lot. Pausing does occasionally enable the game to reset the location of encounters on the map in front of you, so that is why... Uh, when I pause and unpause, I'm very hopeful that the encounters will relocate, which happens sometimes and doesn't happen other times. So there's not much we can do about it. But this is the boss fight, so you notice I saved before. We do have two potions, so it does make it decently safe for us. However, like I said, it is crucial that we defeat the boss and then get zero encounters after the boss. Those are the two very important things. And unfortunately, we cannot just save and quit after we defeat the boss to make that so. We actually have to, in one file, defeat the boss and get no encounters because if we save and quit, it erases the, our last encounter data. So it no long, the game will no longer read that our last encounter was a victory against the boss, which is what we need. So that is why we save right before the boss. If we do, uh, it doesn't look like we're going to die here, but um, if we did end up hitting an encounter, then we will have to reset and then defeat the boss again. And then hope for the best after that. All right, so boss is defeated. We go up, talk to Hagrid, and uh, go into our bank vault, which obviously we're loaded. We are Harry Potter. Absolutely loaded. We get our money. And then we're going to hope for the best here. One of two very big time killers in a marathon run. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stay silent here while I take my time. Okay, first green done. Ooh. 
you're going to notice I'm going to hug the top walls of things a lot because that shrinks our hitbox. It makes it so only we can only be hit by an encounter with the feet of us. And we are good. Great luck. ARPG me has blessed us with really good RNG here. So uh, that is great. Um, that is kind of the most stressful part of doing this run in a marathon setting uh, because that could be... Uh, a reset point for five minutes or more, but we got by. So uh, now that we got our money, we can buy our school supplies. Uh, so we're going to be going to various shops here. Nothing too fancy. Uh, just need to get some school supplies. Uh, first stop is Cauldron Store, which we'll never use a cauldron. Actually, we never use any of the things that we're going to buy here except for one. So. Um, actually, I will buy a potion here, just for safety. So we do use that potion, that does count. But as far as, like, actual school supplies go, we don't use anything except for one pair of gloves that we will grab uh, in the last store that we visit. Um, this game is, a uh, is obviously a very fun run, and we're actually, it's a growing community. Um, um, and that is because we actually kind of have, like, a, a break the record competition going on. Uh, and very informal, uh, but between myself, who I'm the second place holder in this game uh, by three seconds, and the world record holder, and a few other people are kind of all running this game um, concurrently in an effort to, you know, break the record. Uh, and that is because we found some new tech recently that will save us upwards of about 45 seconds. Um, and it involves buying a chocolate frog in that shop like I just did. All right, so this is the last stop we're going to be in for Diagon Alley, and it has the most that we have to buy. And that's it. That's all the supplies we need. Uh, now we just make our way over to Hagrid's. So we bought a bunch of robes, a hat, some name tags, and stuff like that. Um, potions, kits, all this junk, but we're not going to use any of it. Um... And that is partially because of the glitch that we are still actively setting up here. So I had mentioned it's very important that we do not get an encounter after the boss fight. And that's because it helps set us, set a, helps us set up a glitch that we're going to complete here on the train. So I'm just going to focus here on the inputs for a second. And then I will get back to you with what is going on. It's going to look very confusing on the screen, but don't be alarmed. All right, so um, we, we are still in the middle of the glitch, but we just have to walk by and talk to some NPCs here in a very particular order. That is actually Neville. Your screen is not broken, by the way. We did do a weird palette swap thing. It's a, a, a functionality of the glitch that we're activating. All right, so that that um, all, all those specific inputs did trigger actually two glitches. Um, the first one, so, um, when you saw when I went in my inventory, I, uh, went to the chocolate frog that I bought, and this is the new tech that we found, uh, just a couple weeks ago. Um, and that glitch is called the infinite card glitch. Uh, one of our tasters discovered that if you hold left while pressing A to use the I chocolate frog item, you can just continuously press A and it will continuously use the card. Uh, use the use the chocolate frog item chocolate frogs are what we use to get witches and wizards cards which do card combos uh, We actually want to get hit by any count here, so that's good um, This is the second part of the glitch we definitely we want to see this purple frog with the glitched enemy above us um, This purple frog is glitched. It gives us massive experience We're currently level three and it's gonna bump us from level three You ready to level 90? And then we're going to use a ca uh, card combo duplication glitch to get the results of the fight again. So it takes us to level 99. So that is level cap within the first 10 minutes if you're keeping up. So we're going to do a couple things here. We're going to equip those gloves that I mentioned and use the duplication. And boom, we're level capped. So we're going to just get by the lake here. Oops. 
uh, we tr ideally we try to pause and unpause here uh, to, like I said, reset uh, encounter spawns on the map. Uh, but this one was particularly fast, and I did not get the pause frame under. So you're probably confused on everything that just happened. That was an accident. Uh, you're probably confused on everything that just happened. So there's a lot of glitches at play here. As I was talking about, we had the infinite card glitch. Um, when we hold left and A, we can use the chocolate frog card over and over again. And actually, each time we press A, it gives us 255 um, uh, which is in wizard's card. So it gives us a whole bunch of cards to work with for those card combos. Now, card combos are designed to be used in battle only. But this game is broken to the point that if you use the folio triple kiss, which is where your card combos are housed, outside of battle, um, but you have to go into your menu and use it, not just use it from the... Uh, pause screen you could still use card combos even if you're not in battle and you doing that creates a lot of unique glitches in the game so uh, the first one uh, the first thing is that it duplicates the last fight that you dealt with so if the last fight was a victory that's great you're gonna uh, then get the rewards of that fight again the experience some items if they're an item drop enemy um, things like that um, doing and pressing those um pressing those inputs with those npcs on the train and duplicating that fight creates a uh, duplicating the rat boss fight which is what the last fight was before um creates it so that we spawn that frog and that frog gives us the massive xp that we need to um to get level cap so early in the game which is going to make the rest of the game in terms of combat skate by uh, this is our next boss fight here, the knight, which now you get to reap the rewards. Boom, one shot. All right. Um, so that was that was uh, the what we call the frog XP glitch, and then uh, card uh, card combo duplication, which duplicates the outcomes of fights as well as the infinite card glitch. A lot, three different glitches going on at once to produce the effect. Um, we're, we're actually in a little cutscene here that takes some time where we're going to go into the Great Hall, we're going to get sorted, go with our fellow Gryffindors, blah blah blah. Uh, so during this little segment, I'll just uh, give a shout out to the Harry Potter handheld speedrunning Discord. Um, if you're interested in this game, which I highly recommend as a run, um, again, it might be a part of this awfully good blocker, however you want to phrase it, but this, this speedrun is fun and this game is very good. So, um... In my opinion, at least. So, if you're interested, please come on by and join the Harry Potter handheld speedrun discords. Um, I myself am in several, several discords uh, for various games I run and I'm, I'm interested in. And this community is one of the hand, hands down probably the uh, most helpful and most friendly and welcoming group. We're always in each other's streams, supporting each other as best as we can. Uh, we're working on uh, resources. We're answering questions. So, come on by if you're interested. Feel free to you know, uh, DM me or you know Twitter on Twitch on Discord whatever it may be if you're looking for the link for that. Um, all right, so we're obviously sorted into Gryffindor. If you especially if you know the Harry Potter lore, that's surprising to nobody. Um, we just the only movement part that we are in control in in this whole part is that we have to find the Gryffindor table. Like it's particularly hard. <laughs> it's in the same spot every time, so nothing complex there. All right, and that ends the cutscene there. So what happens next in the game um, is basically we go through a mini gauntlet of all of our classes. Uh, we have to do each class once, basically. Uh, but first we have to go, we actually actually get into Gryffindor Tower, which we're not given the password or anything like that. And, we have to, and we're not given the location either. So we just have to find it and also find the password. Uh, Gryffindor is obviously on the top floor. So we have to walk all the way from the bottom floor to the top floor. And then there is a fetch quest that takes us back to the bottom floor to get the password so we can go back to the top floor. So, uh, excellent uh, design. But we're making a couple pit stops here first. So on the first floor, uh, we're going to go in that little side classroom and grab um, one of the herbs that we're going to need for our herbology class later on. This just makes it a little bit faster for us. Luckily, though, the castle is built in with shortcuts. So we're going to take a shortcut here, uh, which takes us up to the fifth floor. And then we just got to walk up two flights to go to the seventh floor. Very convenient. 
Uh, another pit stop here is going to be in this classroom to grab another herb. This classroom is notorious for just hitting you with an encounter, absolutely sniping you. So we're going to be as careful as we can. But again, even as careful as you can be, this you can't really help it with this game sometimes. You're going to get hit with an encounter. You might Again, you might think that because you can see them, it is not so bad. But trust me, uh, when you're competing for the record uh, <laughs> pretty much on a daily basis, uh, as I am currently, uh, you grow to hate every little encounter that you hit. And uh, it, it just will snipe you, that's for sure. All right, so basically... Uh, we went up to Gryffindor Tower, uh, the fat lady who's the portrait that guards the tower said, hey, you need a password. We don't have the password, so we have to go on a little fetch quest here uh, to get the password. Uh, the password is held by Nearly Headless Nick, uh, the ghost of Gryffindor. Um, and what he asks for, we haven't talked to him yet, but what he asks for is a, uh, a school tie to help keep his head on. Um, the school tie is only on this very base floor and it only spawns after you talk to the fat lady, so... You come to the statue to grab it and then we have to walk back up luckily like i said we got these uh, shortcuts that make it a little bit faster for us but it is a little bit obnoxious of a uh, fetch quest uh you'll notice through through the run as i'm doing these various little glitches and stuff like that that this game is very broken however we're and we're still actively working on it this game's story progression code is solid we cannot find ways to skip around it to create kind of like an ace route or something like that um to make to really break it down there are wrong warps that we have discovered but um the problem is that you'll warp there and it won't progress the story so you you would still have to go through everything normal all right so we we talked to nearly headless that gave him the tie he gives us the password to gryffindor and we are on our way Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, we did have some new tech discovered in those few weeks, the infinite card glitch, where I duplicated that frog, uh, that chocolate frog a bunch of times to get a bunch of cards for card combos. Um, that enabled us to do a lot of things. We used to, we used to have to save money and then go shopping and then buy, like, you know, 80 chocolate frogs or whatever for all the card combos that we need. Um, and then the cards that you're given are random, so sometimes, like, we bought 80 and only, and we only needed probably, like, 9 cards total. But we buy them so we buy so many to ensure that we get them just uh, by our pure RNG. But since we duplicated the cards and we got everything we need, it enables a few things. So we, we just slept in Gryffindor for the first time. So that means we can go to the card club on the fifth floor and get a couple of card combos for free. One of them we don't use at all, but the other one is called Reign of Bludgers. Um, and it's the only card combo in the game that attacks multiple enemies at once. So it's going to be really crucial for several fights, um, one of which might be coming up very soon, um, depending on what we get for potions. But I'll, I'll follow that up when we get a little closer. So we talk to this uh, person who gives us the card combos we need. Well, one of which we need. We really don't need the other one, but we have to take both. So, um, And then we're going to make our way down to our first class, which is potions, which is on the... Oops. Ah, come on, NPC. Which is on the uh, dungeon floor, which we've been to already. Potions used to be a really obnoxious class. Um, uh, to spoil a little bit ahead of time, what's going to happen is that we have to collect ingredients for a potion because Neville is going to have a very Neville Longbottom here is going to have a very bad day uh, that starts in this class. So, for whatever reason, it's the first day of class, and Neville is brewing a potion while the rest of us are sitting down. Again, we're 11 years old at this point, and he's probably never brewed a potion in his life. But, tragic accident strikes, he's injured and or poisoned or something, and we have to collect ingredients for the potion that will save him. Now, this used to be really annoying, uh, because one of the things we need for the ingredients is snake fangs, which only occurs from fights with snakes, and is, uh, I think it's about a 25% drop chance. Uh, luckily, two of the three ingredients, including the snake fangs, are in Snape's office here, adjacent to the classroom. So first one is on this poster, boom slang skin, and now we're just going to wait for an encounter here. And hopefully it's snakes. It's a higher percentage to be snakes in the office. And it is. So we're actually going to use that Reign of Blenders combo. If it was uh, just one snake, we would have just killed it solo. But since it's two, it's a little bit faster to use Reign of Blenders and take them both out. We're going to hope for snake fangs here as a reward. 
We didn't get it, so what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that fight using the card combos that we have. That is what the infinite card glitch makes easier. Before, we'd have to uh, fight multiple snake encounters and hope that we get snake fangs, uh, which takes a lot longer than duplicating uh, an encounter. There we go. Now we got our snake fangs. So a little bit of bad RNG there, but not nothing terrible. Nothing that we can't bounce back from. So we already have two of the three ingredients for the potions. The last ingredients are all the way in Haggard's Hut, so we're going to go to the Castle Grounds for the first time. Um, and trust me, you'll probably get tired of this Haggard's Hut walk down. <laughs> um, we probably walked to Haggard's eight, eight times in the run or so. Uh, and this is just the first of them. So he basically tell, he tells us where to find all the ingredients, which we already have two out of three. But the third one, the beetle's eyes, uh, are in his garden here. So there's one here. And even though it says we need beetle's eyes and it should be plural, we do have to collect two still. <laughs> um, and then make our way back up to potions. Um, you'll notice here on the castle grounds that encounters are spawning. Um, and he, when it's during the daytime or during while it's light out, um, the main floors of the castle will not have encounters, but a lot of the side rooms will, and then everything outside always has encounters, so that's kind of how the functionality of the game works. Alright, potions we go here, and we're going to turn in the ingredients. Look at Neville as we approach here. Magically fine, who knows. Maybe Snape cured him while we were gone, and he's just trying to teach us a lesson. But that ends our first class, potions. Next class we're going to do is flying. Um, we are going to make two little mini pit stops on our way here. Uh, to grab a couple of the herbs that we need. Dried nettles is one. And then as we head down, we're also going to grab Dittany. And notice here, so Harry's animation of his legs has stopped working. So we, we call that swag, Harry, uh, or gliding, basically. It does absolutely nothing besides look cool. Um, but basically, whenever you interact with an object while moving, um, say, like, for example, I picked up the Dittany while I was still technically moving, um, for whatever reason, Harry's legs will stop animating, but he'll still continue to move. So just a little, little uh, swag tech for you there. Um... Again, Neville's bad day here. He just broke his wrist. Poor kid. Um, but if you're familiar with the lore of the story, he drops a remember all. Draco Malfoy, who's a jerk, picks it up and takes it. And this is going to enter us into a side scroller um, where we have to chase him. I'm actually going to focus a little bit here to ask to not hit tons of bushes in the trees here. So just one second. We're always good for at least one hit. Um, usually it's a lot more, to be honest. So this is actually a really good flight. Uh, one one bush is good. I've seen it go... Even, even top-level runners, uh, like myself or others, will get hit with ten bushes sometimes. You know, it, it can just be random. Because sometimes you, you think it's just as easy as dodging them, but you'll dodge one and hit another. It's all RNG on their location, and then tons of them can be on the screen at once. So you can't really control it. But we got pretty good RNG there, so not too bad. Um, so that is the end of flying, obviously. Um, we are going to head on over to Herbology here at one last pit stop to pick up another herb. Um, if you haven't gathered already, what Herbology is going to have us do is collect herbs. Um, and we're given a little herb book to fill out with the herbs we collected. And um, we actually have every herb we need besides one already um, but the last one doesn't spawn until after you've entered the class so we're going to grab it after uh, which is the mandrake root um, so nothing and it's actually just outside in the little garden here so it's not too hard to get um, if you remember I talked earlier um, in the run about the only piece of equipment you need to equip that we we get is the uh, the gloves that we bought um, that is for one reason, one reason only. 
Um, the next class we're going to do is Transfiguration. Um, Transfiguration, what that's going to do, it's going to have us, um, basically the, um, the premise there is that a purple rabbit has escaped, oops, a purple rabbit has escaped from the classroom and we have to go and collect the purple rabbit. If you are wearing any other set of gloves or no gloves at all, when you find the rabbit, you have to fight it and then you will be given the rabbit as a reward. If you're wearing specifically the gloves that we have collected uh, from the shop when we bought our uh, school supplies, you can skip the fight altogether and just pick it up. So um, it's very it's very important to uh, make sure the gloves are equipped. But uh, for now, we're finishing Herbology by taking uh, the herbs and getting potion recipes from Snape. Um, and then we're going to head to Transfiguration. So we're still going through the classes. We have four left. Uh, but as you see, they move relatively quickly. Nothing too crazy. Um, Transfiguration is here. Uh, we're, we're about to get one of the very few Dumbledore moments in the game. Uh, he's barely in the game at all. Um, but when he is, it's usually not helpful at all. Here it is. Hey, Mr. Dumbledore, have you seen a rabbit? Uh, no, but I'd certainly like to, and just walks away. Classic. Classic Dumbledore. Alright, so we're heading down. Um, the purple rabbit is always in the same little block of location. Um, so we know he's going to be just to the, uh, the left of the castle here. We can't actually hit an encounter here, which we came very close to. We're going to pick it up. And actually, I'm going to walk down and around just for safety. Uh, every encounter we hit wastes about seven seconds. And the one thing that's uh, really weird about this game is despite being the level cap, level 99, um, there are plenty of things that still outspeed you in this game. So they uh, that can make running away difficult. So we try to avoid encounters as much as we can, not only because it wastes seven seconds on uh, roughly on default, but then it can be even longer if we can't run away uh you know the first or second time but transfiguration is over and now is the worst class uh in my opinion which is charms charms is a memory game that we're going to be dealing with uh if you remember in the movie first charms lesson that we see is learning wingardium leviosa which is what we're going to do here we do wingardium leviosa in this game by doing a long and unnecessary memory game with flitwick um, and you'll see, so I'm just going to focus and make sure I don't mess it up. Okay, so you might think we're done, right? Oh no, that's just a feather. We got left up a book now. This one has three phases as well. And this one is one uh, movement longer than the first one. Oh, you think we're good, right? We got a book. That's pretty good, right? No, we got to do a stool now. And this will actually be the last one. But again, a long, unnecessary. The last one here. And we did it. <sighs> yeah, so you can see why that's annoying. Um, it actually is very lenient in terms of difficulty in, uh, in which that you can actually fail. Uh, to fail it, you have to um, get three strikes. But it resets after each object. So, like, you get three strikes on the feathers, three strikes on the book, three strikes on the stool. So it's generous in terms of that. 
But basically, if you miss, um, Flitwick goes through the motions again, and then you have to, you know, re redo them, and it wastes just so much time, even on the lower levels. So we just want to get that right the first time. And I always suggest to people who are new to running the game, write that, write it down, like write it down just to make sure you don't miss it, because that's a unnecessary time waste. So uh, next class after charms that we're uh, in the middle of here is defense against the dark arts. Um, you'll notice that we got cursed by Peeves the Poltergeist right as we entered, and we're uh, blinking orange every few steps. Um, if you've played Pokemon before, it is very similar to the poison condition, in which that every time it blinks, I'm losing one health. Luckily, we're level 99, have almost 800 health, so that's inconsequential to us. But uh, what we have to do for defense against the dark arts is find the cure book so we're not cursed forever, which is uh, going to be in this classroom, and after we defeat this giant, we'll be given the book. We're hopeful to see a crit here, because we can actually make this a two-turn fight if we get a crit. Um, but we got three turn, so not the end of the world. The curse book is now ours, which we just go in our inventory, use it, and then we're good. No longer cursed. We just have to make our way back to the classroom. We can get hit by an encounter in this classroom too, which just wastes time, but luckily we did not. And we just make our way back to the classroom using these shortcuts that we've uh, utilized in the past. Dumbledore moment two is here. Hey Harry, you feeling better? Yeah, Dumbledore, I found the cure book. Wow, we should really put that in the library. That's the conversation. And Defense Against the Dark Arts is over. One last class, everybody, which is History of Magic. And this one arguably is the most bonkers in terms of uh, uh, logistics, I would say. So. What's going to happen here, so I'll save you the text box reading, we're going to go in, start the class. Uh, the, the professor, Professor Benz, who's a ghost, is going to talk about this famous witch or wizard, uh, which Harry recognizes as one uh, um, a shady individual from Diagon Alley mentioned the name of having the card of this individual. Benz is like, oh cool, do you have that card? And Harry says no, but somebody in Diagon Alley has it. And then Benz is like, cool, go to Diagon Alley and get the card. So, luckily, we run into Hagrid here, and magically, we're going back to Diagon Alley. <laughs> Absolutely bonkers for a teacher to propose this, but okay. There's a shady individual, definitely not Quirrell, don't worry about it. And then, um, what we have to do is go into this person's vault and get the card. And we're going to have to do a boss fight, which should look pretty familiar to you, but it's going to go a lot easier than the last time. So this is, and luckily we do not have to go really anywhere in the vault. It's not, in this this iteration of Gringotts is nowhere near as dangerous. Here's the boss fight, and wow, it is the rat boss. But it's going to go much differently this time. We're going to use Reign of Bludgers, which will make this a two-turn fight, or in a very rare stance, a one-turn fight, if we crit on the big guy and it does enough damage. Let's see. Nope. But a two-turn fight nonetheless. A lot faster. If we go too fast into using a spell right after we use that card combo on the big rat, we can actually soft lock the game. So, there we are. That's the boss defeated. We got the card. Now, all we got to do is make a quick exit here. You can get hit by an encounter in that little part of the Gringotts hallway or even the bank vault as well, but luckily we've, uh, we've dodged it. Uh, let's see if we can get a little bit of swag here. Nope, we didn't get it, but that's okay. Uh, during this cutscene... Oh, we did get it, actually. Cool. Um, for whatever reason, if you start talking to the shady individual while you're walking, uh, in the interim moments between text boxes, Harry will continue to move. Uh, we're not designed to move that way, and we actually go through walls a little bit, but it's just for swag. It doesn't do anything in terms of skips. And voila, that is our class schedule complete. So now we get a little bit more into the meat and potatoes of the story here, finally. Um, the first thing being Draco challenges to a duel in the after hours of uh, the castle, which is we're going to see the castle in darkness for the first time, which is different than the castle during the light time. 
When the castle is dark on the main floors, you can hit encounters on the main floors now. So it makes it uh, so that it, it's really difficult to save time and very RNG dependent. However, this very first segment where we're going to walk down to floor 3, for whatever reason, maybe the developers are just being kind, uh, there are no encounters will spawn as we walk down. Another detriment to it being dark is that uh, when the castle is darkened, the um, all the shortcuts that we are used to taking are locked. So we have to just walk it down old fashioned style down all the stairs. Like I said, we have to go from floor seven to floor three here. So we're just gonna walk down a series of steps. Obviously we have a little train of people going. You might think, hey, if we had an encounter, at least they'll help you, right? Nope. <laughs> Absolutely not. Harry, uh, we do not get allies in this game at all. Harry is purely by himself. All right, we're actually going to do two little cutscene skips. That was the first one. Uh, walking up and diagonal skips some text boxes there. And we're going to walk in a very specific pattern to walk around um, cutscene triggers here uh, with Filch. Um, if we miss those, it loses about 30 seconds. 30 to 35 seconds. But we hit both, so very good. And then we got a little bit of cutscene here. Um, we need to run from Filch, so we're gonna hit. Uh, we're actually not in charge of moving at all in this little mini segment, but we're gonna hide in this little classroom here. And if you're familiar with the story, you'll see a little surprise guest. It's Fluffy. Looking real tough. So now, unfortunately, after this little dialogue, we are no longer safe from encounters. And if we hit an encounter here, it's gonna waste a good chunk of time. So we're gonna play it a little bit safe. As we walk back up because we really don't want to hit an encounter but if we do it's not the end of the world all right so we're on four four now five basically if we hit an encounter here we're gonna have to kill it or get another encounter and defeat it before the next little segment uh, because we're it's gonna be setting up another glitch for us Luckily, I think we're home free. We are. We're good. Um, so if you're familiar with, again, with the lore of the story, um, what's coming up next is the Halloween segment here. Um, so what that is, is that a troll is let loose in the castle, originally in the dungeon, but then it chases it into the girl's bathroom where Hermione will be. Um, and basically, we're actually going to skip that whole fight and hopefully a cutscene before it as well. Uh, but first, we got to see it play out a little bit. Just a little mini cutscene where uh, Ron is a jerk. Uh, Hermione goes and cries in the bathroom, sets up, you know, that the troll then goes in the bathroom, which is why we have to go and rescue her. Uh, first, we just got to talk to this random NPC to progress the story. So two skips here coming up. First is what we call Snape Skip. Uh, there is a cutscene with Snape and the troll, but it's most mainly Snape, um, that if we pause on a specific uh, portion of the land right on the trigger, basically, of the cutscene, we can skip it all together, which saves about 20 seconds if we can get it. So let's see. We got it. So yeah, usually there's Snape, he moves around, then we have to watch the troll enter the bathroom. Uh, now this is the second skip which I'm going to do and then I'll explain. Actually, we uh, we butchered that, so luck that's why we saved there, because the skip is crucial. Uh, this is the troll skip that I mentioned before, and it's the same premise. We're going to want to uh, 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 basically pause exactly on the cutscene trigger, which we got this time. Um, and uh, it will skip the fight altogether. This one's a little bit different for a couple reasons. One, you have to go all the way to the right, uh, not all the way to the right, but right enough to the point that you see Hermione walk down the side of the screen here shortly. If you don't see, if you're not far enough over to the right and you don't see Hermione walking, the game will soft lock. There she goes, so that means we're safe. Uh, also, when we pause there, we can't just pause and unpause. For whatever reason, we have to enter our uh, menu. And um, enter our like equipment menu, I should say, and then back out. For whatever reason, if you don't do that, again, the game soft locks. 
I'm not exactly sure why those two things are linked, but that's the case. But there it is. We did the Snape skip and the Troll skip, so very good. I'm notorious for missing the Snape skip, but usually get the Troll skip first try, and we got the opposite this time, so get to see both sides of the both sides of the coin here. So we have to make another famous walk down to Hagrid's here to progress the story. Now, luckily, the rest of the... Well, not exactly, but mainly the rest of the run, um, if we hit encounters, it just slows us down. It's not like, uh, oh, it, uh, you know, if it, it fails a glitch. We're going to get into arguably another... It's probably the second most important glitch in this run. Uh, as we get a little bit closer, but I'm going to hold off on that because we still got quite a few minutes before that happens. Um, so, now we have our little Christmas segment. Peeves, being a jerk, is going to steal our presents. Bah humbug. And this actually used to be one of the main segments that we would do our shopping trip on um, to get the chocolate frogs. Um, but luckily, since we found that infinite card glitch, we no longer need to do that. Fun fact there as well, so there's a little note that's left by Peeves there. Um, if you walk low enough, you can actually skip that note altogether and save the text box frames. However, um, despite when you're done with the, the quest here, this little fetch quest, um, and Peeves is no longer a problem, when you re-enter the, uh, the common room, the note will trigger automatically, even though he's already been dealt with. Um, so it doesn't save any frames to try to skip it. Ooh, a little unlucky there, but we've gotten pretty lucky with encounters so far, so I can't complain. Just got sniped. But our Christmas presents are just one floor beneath us in this random storage room. However, Filch catches us. And this is a little bit of unfair punishment, I think. Again, remember that this is Christmas. And if you're also familiar with the Harry Potter lore here, that... Um, Harry and Ron are some of the only uh, kids in the castle. So we actually just lost house points because a ghost stole our presents and we got them back. And I think that's a little bit unjust. So if we can get hashtag justice for Harry trending, that would be really great. So we can get those house points back. But basically, um, we have retrieved our presents, got our punishment. We just have to make our way back up to the common. Again, as broken as this game can be with glitches and skips and stuff and all that, the story progression code is rock solid that we've seen so far. So unfortunately, these little mini fetch quests and annoying cutscenes and stuff like that that we can't avoid, we don't have a choice to but to uh, play them right now. Um, this is another long-ish cutscene where we just open our presents and get some stuff. Um, just want to shout out um, uh, NASA and the ARPG uh, me team uh, for selecting not only this run, but uh, Cartoon Cartoon Summer Resort, which I played right before this as well. Um, just want to say thank you guys so much uh, for accepting uh, me into the marathon. It's been a lot of fun. I've caught a lot of excellent runs this weekend, uh, and I'm just happy to really be a part of it. So thank you guys for having me. Um, really appreciate that. Um, and if you are uh, followers of the uh, NASA channel, I will be uh, running uh, in NASA 2020's online event as well. I'll be running Pokemon in that one, so Pokemon Red. So uh, definitely check us out. But on to the next segment. So I'm going to pause there just to be safe. Um, basically, we now have the Invisibility Cloak, which we got as a Christmas gift. Um, and obviously what we're going to do is get into mischief with it right away and we're going to head down to the library where we know there's a restricted section and we're going to do some research on a uh, on one Nicholas Flamel who Hagrid accidentally let slip, uh, let slip the name uh, in one of those cutscenes that we walked to Hagrid's. Um, see if we can find anything on it again it's night so there are encounters and also we have to go down to floor two so we're just making all kinds of uh awful trips here uh since there are no uh cuts uh no uh shortcuts rather so we're actually gonna hit two little scenes here so we are gonna trigger the cut scene here second but first we're actually gonna grab a spell petrificus totalis which will be very important for the end game 
Oh, we won't see it for quite a while, so. Uh, then we just have to hit a trigger to uh, sound the alarm to progress the story here. If you walk too close to the library and right there and like bump into her, uh, you will have to restart this segment from Gryffindor Tower all over again. So it's a real waste of time. Uh, we also cannot go right back to Gryffindor Tower because Filch is going to be guarding the stairs at one point. So if you went down, uh, not not yet on the next floor, if you went down to try to go up to the stairs again and uh, bumped into Filch, same thing. You'll have to restart the segment all over again from Gryffindor Tower. But first, since I know Filch is going to be there, we have to trigger a cutscene that's in this hallway. Um... I will also shout out this game. So it's a very fun speed run, very enjoyable. I would say this game is very hard casually. Um, one, it's a lot of grinding. And two, the game does not tell you a lot of these things. You just have to know. Like for example, if Filch is blocking the stairs, like I said, I would not have known otherwise to just randomly come in this hallway and figure it out uh, that we have to find the mirror of Erised and uh, progress the story that way. I'm gonna go around just to be safe. Um, but, you know, alas, since I've played this game once or twice, um, I know that's what we have to do. So uh, we go in that hallway, we find the Mirror of Erised, uh, which that cutscene triggers Filch leaving the stairs and Snape uh, being off patrol. And we get to go back up into Gryffindor Tower relatively uninhibited, actually. Just that one encounter in the uh, a hallway uh, when we were getting our Christmas presents, but otherwise, good. And we just have to go back to sleep. Alright, so this next segment is uh, dealing with Norbert, which is a dragon that Hagrid hatches from an egg. Um, and this is a really Hagrid-focused part of the run, so as you can imagine, we're making a lot of trips down to Hagrid's. Um, in this Norbert segment, it's three trips alone. The Hagrids, so it's pretty obnoxious. But we start in the library again. We can actually hit encounters in the library during the daytime. I don't know why there would be encounters live uh, in the library where students should be studying and stuff, but you know, developers had one thing in mind. Um, so we're gonna make our first of many trips down to Hagrids, and this next segment. Um, it was uh, cut down significantly recently also by the infinite card glitch. Um, I'd mentioned recently uh, that we got the Reign of Bludgers card combo, which allows us to hit multiple enemies at once. This next segment, uh, Norbert hatches, and he's going to be hungry, and he wants ch uh, Hagrid wants us to collect chickens to feed Norbert. Uh, see, one of those fights that we are slower than, technically, so we were not able to escape first try. But we did get a second try. Um... We need to collect five chickens, um, and we have to f actually fight five separate chicken encounters, even though a uh, chicken encounter has three chickens inside of it. When you complete uh, a chicken fight, it only gives you one chicken as a reward. So we have to do that five times, but as I mentioned, each encounter has three chickens. So we, what we used to do is we used to paralyze all three chickens and then take them out one at a time. But since we have a lot of extra cards now, we just use Reign of Bludgers each time and take them out. And it's, it, it, it saved off probably a good 25 to 30 seconds in this part alone. So it saved us a good chunk of time. Makes it worth going a little bit out of our way to grab the card combos. And it's not even that out of the way, so not too bad. We're actually going to save here. The reason why I save is uh, for some reason, uh, we're, we're spawning basically right where the chickens spawn. Like we saved there. Um, for some reason... I'm thinking based. it's based on, you know, we, we click it too fast, we catch a chicken too fast from when it spawns. Sometimes the game will crash um, in between. Um, so we're going to save there just for safety. But that is our first chicken encounter. And like I said, we're basically standing right where they spawn, so as soon as we get back into the overworld, we just click A and then there, we have our second chicken. And I'll save every two chickens just to be safe. This will be our second one. But yeah, as you see, Rain of Bludgers is very fast, takes them out one at a time. And basically, it turns each fight into a turn, two turn fight when it used to be a five turn fight. So, definitely saves us some time. 
Again, just saving for safety so we don't have to do multiple chicken fights over again. And Reign of Bludgers again. Yeah, this is another kind of longish annoying segment, but we do have to do it. At least this one has some combat into it as opposed to just walking or cutscenes, so. It is a little bit more entertaining to look at, but. Another thing that used to happen, by the way, with this, um, is that since we use spells and, and stuff like that, we actually have a chance to miss. So we could paralyze the chickens and then miss with the spell, and that just adds another turn. And, you know, doing it five times, there's a good chance you'll miss at least once. But whenever you use the card combo, the card combo cannot miss. So you can only hit or crit. And you'll know that it's a crit because the numbers will be orange. They were all white there, so there were no crits. Alright, and this should be the last chicken, I believe. You can just, um, you know, this is one of those rare occasions where you, killing the animal saves the frames, so... Save the frames, kill the chickens. Orange on the bottom chicken there, that's how you know it's a crit. And then obviously it does a lot more damage too. But it doesn't matter, crits don't help in this case because we would have killed it in one shot anyway, so. But we got our chickens back into Hagrid's hut. Give up the chickens and that is part one of three for Norbert. The longer of the parts, thankfully, so. Alright, again we start in the library, again Malfoy is lurking in the corner, again we walk to Hagrid's <laughs> to trigger the next part. So this part this part two of Norbert is very, very much similar um, in setup to the next to the previous, but luckily we don't have to fight a bunch of chickens this time, so. Uh, we're gonna make our way. Almost got sniped there, luckily we didn't. Um and what we're heading down to, so now uh uh, we're going to head down to Hagrid's to tell them that, hey, Ron's brother Charlie will gladly take the dragon off your hands as he works in Romania training dragons uh, and studying dragons. But uh, when we get to Hagrid's hut, he's going to tell us that Norbert escaped, which is going to enter us into our, our second of three uh, flying minigames. And this one is also a side-scroller, similar to the uh, the one where we chase Draco. We're also going to chase Norbert, chase Norbert rather. Um, and this one is a lot more safe than the Draco one, uh, because we can't get him in one cycle exactly. Uh, he gets a random speed boost a little bit of the way through, so we actually cannot catch him until after that speed boost anyway. So you'll see here that he's shooting fireballs. We can actually get hit by up to three fireballs and not lose time at all, so it's a it's very generous. Um, they hit one there, uh, but we still haven't lost time. And uh, you can, you, I usually tell by an audio cue if I've gotten it, uh, based on the, where the music is, if I've gotten it in the fastest possible cycle. Let you know in a second if I have. Yep, I did. So that is the fastest possible cycle. Good auto scroller so far. Almost as fast as they could have possibly been. If we did not hit that one bush in Draco's, then that would have been even better. Okay, so this next segment is very important. The last of the Norbert segments, Harry and Hermione are under the invisibility cloak, and we have to make our way down to Hagrid's. This is the longest walk in the castle, um, where we have to walk every floor. We can't we can't avoid it and do shortcuts. And obviously, encounters are running rampant, so uh, we don't want to hit them because it's just going to add time. But I'll take this time while we're making our way down to explain the, the glitch that we're going to do next, which is very important to good chunky time saves in this run but it is heavily RNG dependent. So um, this glitch that we're going to perform next is called lighting. I've uh, alluded to it in the run uh, throughout so far that um, when the castle is dark, obviously encounters can pop on the main floor. The lighting glitch, uh, what we do is when we're in Hagrid's hut, we're going to pick up the Norbert crate uh, as because we what we have to do is deliver Norbert to the seventh floor astronomy tower um, for Charlie to collect and then we'll be good to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up the Norbert crate, we're gonna save and quit, 
uh, because that will uh, remove any backlog data of past encounters. And what we're going to do is we're going to immediately reload, go into our card combos, and utilize a card combo. Now, like I said, usually when it does that, it duplicates your last previous fight. But when we save and quit, um, it does not have another encounter to read. So it's actually going to send have Harry fight three versions of itself. If we get lucky, which is about 25% chance, Harry will attack himself, which will cause a death warp. Uh, which will warp us immediately from Hagrid's hut to the fourth floor of the castle, saving a bunch of time. So I'm going to save and quit here. Hit reset. Use a card combo and hope for the best. It's about a 25% chance to work on any given attempt. And we got it. Terrific. Like I said, this is all RNG based. We're trying to find ways to make this uh, glitch consistent. Um, but we can't, uh, if, uh, if we don't get lucky there, um, one of the three Harrys in front of us will attack forward and it will cause the game to soft lock. And then we just have to reset and try again and hope for the best. Luckily, we got it first try there. So uh, that death warps us to the fourth floor of the hospital wing. But as you can see as well, the castle is illuminated. And that is because when we activate the glitch, it takes the scenery from where you warped from. So if you noticed, Hagrid's hut, even though it was dark, was illuminated. So that helps us in the way that now there are no encounters on the floor. We hug the wall there and are a little bit careful because there is a cutscene that triggers with Malfoy and McGonagall. But if we hug the corner, we can skip it. So uh, that saved us about nine seconds. Oh, geez. I didn't get a chance to say it yet, but one crucial thing is if we can as much as possible, because like I said, it's about a 25% chance to work on any given attempt. We And we do have to do this quote unquote lighting glitch three times to do these death warps uh, for optimal time save. If we can avoid it, we try our very best to not hit any encounters there because if we don't hit any encounters, we don't have to reset up the glitch because the, it will read that as our last encounter as a defeat. So it will automatically death warp us anyway. But however, that hallway, the astronomy tower hallway is incredibly narrow and it is very, very hard to not hit an encounter in that hallway. Very difficult. Um, not to mention the next segment that we're going to incur as you can see our house points draining away because of our punishment is that we're going to have detention in the Forbidden Forest. Um, and the Forbidden Forest is also full of narrow pathways and it's a long segment where we would have to try our best to avoid hitting encounters. Um, if we could get it encounterless then uh, we will perform, we will walk back into Hagrid's right after the Forbidden Forest and uh, do the uh, card combo glitch again and we will death warp immediately. Now, however, since we hit an encounter in the Astronomy Tower hallway, what we're going to have to do is walk into Hagrid's after detention and attempt to set the glitch up again by saving and quitting and then reloading. So hopefully we get it because, again, it saves the most time if it happens. But if we don't, then uh, we'll try it probably. It's worth trying probably like three to four times. Um, elsewise, elsewise, we'll just have to um, do the Walk of Shame, which is doing the actual walk from Hagrid's all the way up to the top floor again. But again, notice um, that this it's its actually nighttime right now. It's supposed, outside in the castle grounds, is supposed to be dark uh, because we're going to detention in the Forbidden Forest and the Forbidden Forest is at night, uh, this detention segment. But because we activated the lighting glitch, as you can see why we call it lighting now, um, it is daytime. It doesn't help for the grounds, unfortunately, because the grounds will have encounters no matter what time of day, but it does help with the castle floors. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to lose it, uh, the lighting portion rather, um, as soon as we enter the forest because the game does not have code in which the forest is illuminated during the day at all. So as soon as we enter the forest, it's going to be night again, and that's just uh, the game will just be reading it as nighttime. Nothing we can really do about it. All right, first thing we're gonna do is at this tree, we're gonna pick up a Grand Pepper Up Potion, which heals our magic. Um, 
One unfortunate downside to being level capped so early is that we never level up in the game and obviously leveling up would recharge our health and magic points. So because we don't ever level up and get that free recharge, we do grab two potions. One is not until very late in the game uh, to just make it a little bit safer for us um, and guarantee that we don't die or run out of magic um, at the last fights with Voldemort. Uh, but here we are in the Forbidden Forest. As you can see, there are some narrow passageways here. So if we hadn't hit that encounter in the Astronomy Tower, I would be doing everything in my power to avoid hitting a counter in the forest as well. Now granted, it is much less narrow than it is in the Astronomy Tower, but it is still very hard. And like I said, you could be as careful as you want, but sometimes you will just get sniped and there's nothing you can do about it. You could, you could pause after every step, but occasionally a counter will just spawn on you and there's not really anything you can do about it. Um, again, we're going to hug the top parts of walls as much as we can to shrink our text box. Or, not our text box, our hit box, rather. And we're just following a very particular pattern to uh, get through the forest as fast as we can. You'll notice a lot of times as well, as much as I can, I'm moving diagonally. Uh, just because moving diagonally is a faster than moving straight up and down. I just, uh, you know... That's, that's just like common sense, you know, diagonal, just straight line uh, is the fastest path to any given point, and sometimes those points are at a diagonal, so it's faster to move diagonally than it is to move, you know, up and right, for example. But there's various little cutscene triggers here. Um, this is a particularly hard map to avoid encounters in, but we take a particular path to simplify it a little bit in terms of uh, making it less risky. I'm actually going to wait here for a second for a counter. There we go. Because this is a very narrow path. And we still hit that one anyway, but that's okay. Um, one thing that's unfortunate that you might not get to see in the run because it hasn't happened. So that last encounter had um, a giant, which we have fought before, but also had a turtle. Um, one thing that's funny in this game is the turtles attack with fire. Which is obviously weird by default because turtles are water creatures, but they don't shoot fire out of their face. They shoot fire out of their butts. They fart fire on you. That's how they attack you. Um, also, ironically, turtles are faster than you, so we could have not gotten out of that fight fastly. Um, and that animation where they shoot fire at you from their butts is uh, very slow. So uh, it's unfortunate all around with turtles. Uh, but basically, we found the unicorn, which is what we were here for anyway, was uh, to find the unicorns because they're continuously being attacked in the Forbidden Forest, and that is because Voldemort is using them as a li uh, lifeblood source. Drinking the blood of a unicorn, if you're not familiar with the lore, uh, gives you eternal life. that we got lucky there we're almost out relatively unscathed only two encounters is not terrible if i hadn't hit an encounter there i probably would have tried to play it a little bit more safe you know a little bit more pausing and waiting for encounters to spawn before i moved but since we had already hit an encounter anyway it wasn't wasn't really worth saving there are also plenty of times that i've gotten out of the forest without encounters and then hit a for, uh, encounter immediately there uh, just outside of Hagrid's hut. So save and quit inside Hagrid's hut again if it wants to reset. Finally did. And we're going to hope for the best here. Come on, baby. Wow. Great luck. Great luck. 
Like I said, it's about a 25% chance for that to work, and the reason why we know it's 25% chance is so, we're, like I mentioned, we're fighting three Harrys there. Um, so we're all speed tied because we all have the same stats. Um, so there is a one in four chance that we will outspeed the other Harrys and get to go first. Um, so luckily, um, usually that can be a very reset heavy point, or if we don't get lighting there, then we usually just reset the run because uh, it's just not going to go well for us. Uh, Hermione's hair is purple here, and that is because it's supposed to be dark here and uh, in, the, in this room right now, but we did lighting, so the lights are illuminated again. Uh, so that's why her hair looks funky, it's just a visual glitch. So we have lighting activated the second time. This, So we're going to have to go from here and walk up to the castle. Just a very small segment of moving. Um, we really don't want to hit an encounter or we have to set up lighting again for another death warp. Um, so we're going to try our best not to hit an encounter here. <laughs> think we're going to be okay. Terrific. Okay, good. So now that that's the only point in this small mini segment where we could have hit an encounter and ruined lighting, so we're safe. Uh, we don't have to save and quit now. We can just use a card combo and it will duplicate, so that's really good. But this is the end game. Um, we now know all the information we need to know. We assume that Snape is going to enter um, the chamber where the Sorcerer's Stone is being kept. The Sorcerer's Stone, again, if you're not familiar with the lore, um, I'm, I'm a big Harry Potter fan, so I always like talking about the lore. Um, if you're not familiar with the lore, the Sorcerer's Stone is used to make the Elixir of Life, which gives the person eternal life, uh, uncursed this time, as opposed to Unicorn Blood. Um, so obviously Voldemort is after that, so he can come back to life and uh, terrorize us all again. The Sorcerer's Stone is, defend uh, is in the castle, uh, where that uh, fluffy... Is guarding and uh, we're entering the gauntlet where we have to go through all the challenges in order to get to the Sorcerer's Stone coming up. Uh, first we have to have that classic moment where Her uh, Hermione paralyzes Neville who's trying to stop us but he's very brave you know how it works um, and this is where our next death warp is gonna be. Again, we don't have to save and quit because we didn't hit any encounters, so our last encounter was already a defeat. And for whatever reason, this is this death warp works different. Instead of taking us to the hospital wing on the fourth floor, which it still would have been faster, um, it takes us right directly to outside the door where we have to be anyway. So it's a really good death warp in that. Cool. So, first of the challenges is Devil Snare here. And this is where we're going to do some different combat mechanics than we're used to seeing. So first we're going to use that Petrificus Totalis spell finally that we picked up so long ago and paralyze all three branches of the Devil Snare. Then we're going to target the smaller branches first with the uh, Incendio spell, Fire spell. They will be one-shotted. Um, we got a little lucky there. Uh, the We want to keep the big branch paralyzed and it can break out of paralysis after one turn. Uh, which is good. As soon as a, a branch is attacked, it will be unparalyzed, so it's fine now that it's not. But it saves the most possible time if it stays paralyzed until we attack it. Um, but we have to. We could have gotten lucky and got a one shot on there if we got a crit, but we didn't. But we did get the. We only had to paralyze once, so that's still pretty good. All right. We can hit that encounter there. Luckily, we didn't. Next challenge is another. The third of the flying mini games. Which, this one is terrible, it's not an auto-scroller, uh, but the key is at the top of the screen, we're at the bottom, and there's a bunch of keys in our way, and they can just absolutely troll you and take you out. But luckily, we basically, the strategy is to hug the sidewall here and move up. You obviously can still get hit with keys like I am right now, and this one's being particularly a pain in the butt, but... Uh, we're hopeful to get to basically the top of the screen here. We can get by. They're being very trolly. And we just head, oop, head down there and grab the key that we need. There we go. Not the worst key segment there, but not the best either. I've gotten pretty lucky and basically I've just flown straight up and got it, which is obviously fastest, but that happens very rarely. Um, next segment here is wizard's chest. 
And uh, we don't actually get to play chess in this game, unfortunately. We just have to do three fights against chess pieces. Um, and basically, all we want to see here is we're going to attack with spells like normal. And all we want to see here is some crits just to speed this thing up. Um, crits are... It's seemingly rare. We haven't really gotten many crits in this run, unfortunately. That, that would be helpful. Um, and we didn't on this fight. This fight is a three turn by default, unless we miss. So three turn. That's the first chess piece down. The second chess piece, the castle, is also a three-turn fight. So again, we're we're wanting to see some orange numbers here to speed this up a little bit for us. Yeah, no, not yet. Sendio again. Hopefully, we get a crit. Nah. Okay. No luck. Um, the next fight, which is against the. The king, I believe, I believe it's a king. Um, king chess piece there. Um, is a five to six turn fight normally. Um, which can be as little as like a three turn fight if we get a couple crits, but we haven't been lucky so far, so let's see if we're lucky now. And luckily with this one, we just spam Flipendo, which is a zero cost spell to us. So we actually are not wasting any magic points. And it looks like we're not, yeah, we didn't get lucky. We did get the five turn instead of the six turn, so that does help. But not particularly lucky, unfortunately. Alright, so uh, this would have been a challenge where we fought the troll, but uh, quote-unquote Snape already took care of it, so we're just going to grab a health potion for safety. And this is the potions minigame, which if you're familiar with the game Mastermind, it's the same thing. We are going to save there just for safety in case the game decides to troll us, but it doesn't usually. Not too bad. If we stay on one side of the screen, I count that as a success, so that's pretty good. And we're actually in the last two fights of the game, believe it or not. Which are gonna be oh surprise, it's Quirrell, not Snape as the bad guy. So we're gonna fight Quirrell and we're gonna fight Voldemort. And the fights are structured the very much the same, and we're gonna be using a glitch to make these fights as fast as possible. The glitch is called the enemy attack skip. So we're gonna set both of these fights up in the same way. Um, enemy attacks get basically after we use an item or the flea option in the game if we press a before the turn uh, we skip the enemy's turn so first we're going to paralyze quarrel and then we're going to use mucus ad nauseum which is a poison spell luckily when you use a poison spell it does not necessarily break um, the enemy out of paralysis and we're going to use the poison spell three times because it does stack now we're going to use, we'll use a grand just for safety, and then we're going to enemy attack skip. Basically, as long as we keep pressing A in between, um, the game is still trying to take Quarrel's turn, um, but it, it, it keeps trying and failing. So um, what happens is that that poison damage that we've incurred keeps dealing damage. So now we basically will just spam enemy attack skip and as long as we can. Uh, unfortunately, when they break out of paralysis, it becomes increasingly more difficult because it begets, uh, we get a little bit more lag uh, when, while they're moving as opposed to when they're not moving. So the frames become tighter. But we do the same thing with Voldemort. Unfortunately, he broke out early, so we're going to paralyze again. And the last time, so we do three uh, three poisons. And I'm gonna use a pepper up potion just to be, make sure I have enough magic points in case he breaks out. Get ready on time, by the way. Not yet, but get ready on it. Gotta re-paralyze here. And here it comes. Time. Not too bad at all. A 113.53. Uh, we got some good RNG in this run. Um, 
Like I said, uh, during the run, those lighting glitches um, can, we might, we could have reset four or five times and waste a bunch of time. Um, before I go back to that fun fact in this game, so we, we're counting our house points here. And this game is unique in the fact that but there is a small chance that Gryffindor does not win the House Cup, despite everything. The only time that we would not have won the House Cup is if that if we had failed that Malfoy skip, cutscene skip I talked about before we entered the Astronomy Tower. If we had failed that, what happens is uh, McGonagall catches Malfoy trying to catch us and takes points away from Slytherin. Um, and that basically triggers more RNG elements in the points, which would cause um, another potentially another house to win. Um, so if we had failed that skip, then that. But uh, yeah, we got some good RNG in this round. I'm pretty happy with the 113. Um, again, just want to shout out the ARPG Me uh, team for accepting this game into the marathon. It's an excellent game. If you would love to speed run it, which I definitely suggest, we're a growing community getting more and more people every day uh the harry potter handheld speedrun discord is where you're going to want to start uh you can find it on the speedrun.com page for this game um or you can reach out to me and i'd be happy to provide you the link um you can reach out to me you know via discord uh, conception 2 or you can reach out to me via uh twitch uh twitch.tv slash conception 2 you can whisper me if you see me live feel free to reach out to me if you have questions i'm a wonderful resource i'm more than happy to help so um Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for hanging out with us during these last two games. And uh, enjoy the rest of the marathon. Stick around. we got some great stuff coming up. Thank you so much. And thanks to you. We enjoyed some, well, experiences, as I described earlier. Thanks for... <laughs> Definitely some experiences. You lightened up our days. And oh, beautiful. To enjoy the rest of the weekend. So give it up. Claps and chat, please. At conception too. Thank you so much. And we'll be, <laughs> we'll be with you with Mega Man Sprite Game. And if you can believe it or not, um, we just will do a short intermission and another ad break, of course, because we need to chill. And we'll be mm -hmm. with you again in a bit. Don't miss that run. I've seen it before. It's great. It's great.